As most of you probably know by now, the Roblox games found Killer Killers and Nerfed One received a massive update recently known as Killer Empowerment, which aimed to massively buff all killers. Well, most killers, making them far more powerful and in turn, much more dangerous. Alien can now steal items, Michael Myers can become a ballerina, and Pennywise can... hide in a balloon. Huh. So I thought instead of making yet another killer tier list, or you know, just a video going over all of the changes in the update, I thought it'd be a good idea to, you know, attempt another sector challenge, and test out how powerful these new killer abilities really are. I thought long and hard about a challenge that would make me getting all badges in 24 hours on a brand new Roblox account look easy. I could do Area 51 storming Rock Thrower only solo, which might actually be impossible, goddamn. I could attempt to beat Elite Kraken 100 times over, although I would probably get to the point of scratching off my entire face by the end of the video. How about Extreme Endless Survival Mode? It adds all of the new killer abilities into the mix, making Endless Survival actually a challenge instead of just... Oh, we're playing Endless Survival? Sorry, it's just a little boring sometimes. But simply playing Extreme Endless Survival didn't seem enough in my opinion. I could change around a few settings to make my life a bit more miserable, like disabling magic, disabling hellhound. What about changing the starting round and giving myself a round goal to get to? You know, I could start on round 10, round 20, round 999, the maximum value in the game, on Extreme Endless Survival. Let's do this thing. I did this on a VIP server, by the way. It lets you change the round number to whatever you want, just so you know. Before we attempt this challenge, though, just like always, we need to set up a few rules. There are no rules. There are no rules to this challenge. The end goal of this video is to get to round 1000. That's it. I'm not excited. And here we are, round 999. Here there is no fun or excitement, only pain, agony, and despair. It's just like the UK, however we do have half a million points, so that's a thing. Of course you have to know I went straight for the obvious weapon choice. Shield your eyes killer mode players, I'm gonna be raygun spamming and there's nothing you can do about it. And once I turned on the power, it was time to pack a punch the raygun. Not like that really mattered anyway, because uh, look at how much health these killers have, um... I went through a full mag without putting a single dent in one of these guys. A full mag! Of a pack a punch ray gun. How on earth am I supposed to beat this challenge? One might ask. They're so tanky! What? Naturally, I got trampled to death on my first attempt without getting a single taste of progressing at all. You know what? That's fine. Everything is fine. It can't be worse than doing Elite Kraken without game passes. Surely? Surely. I went into this challenge with a big smile on my face, and to be honest, I fully expected to die in my first run, so all of my hopes and dreams weren't entirely crushed. Yet. Instead of following the same strategy as before and dying within the first 7 seconds of the round to killers that have AI smarter than ChatGPT, I aim to in fact take a different approach and took them on with my own bare fists like a true warrior. Nah, just kidding, what I actually did is hide behind the mystery box so they couldn't touch or see me, cowering in fear for my life. This hiding spot was going to carry me through the thousands of killers that I had to put down in order to progress. Yep, you heard me right. Thousands of killers. I then, for some reason, hit the mystery box a few times. Guess I really did learn nothing from my 24 hour batch video because I got trash weapons that basically dealt no damage to the killers. I need the ray gun. So after piling up all of the killers, running around the main hall, bolting into the radioactive area and grabbing the weapon, I was immediately reminded by the rake that I could not in fact have fun in this challenge. Honestly, looking back at all this footage, I'm really not sure why I sacrificed myself multiple times just to get the ray gun. As you might have guessed by now, it's not really a practical way of killing killers in this challenge. In order to cure my life-threatening injuries, I grabbed an energy drink- Oh, right, I'm sorry. Bloxy Cola from the cafeteria in order to maybe die a little bit slower next time. Did I finally make progress? No, absolutely not, because I died in quite literally the exact same way and spot as last time to the killer's ungodly destructive new abilities. I think... Maybe don't go for the ray gun. I may or may not have been listening to my own voice at the time, but guess what I did next round? Go for the ray gun! Again! However, instead of running straight to the Pack-A-Bunch machine on foot like a nerd, I instead opted to use the teleporter for a little bit of safer travel, avoiding these killers entirely. At least that's what I thought until I realized I needed to turn on the power to use the teleporter. Sorry for trying something new, forgive me. However, this mistake actually gave me a big brain idea, because as Chucky dashed towards me hoping to consume my vital organs, I was reminded that I could just use traps to kill these killers. They can be clunky to use sometimes, but they do instantly kill any killer regardless of the round. Is this it? 
Have we finally discovered the strategy? I don't know, I kept going for the ray gun for god's sakes. Great, now I'm being chased by a lawnmower. How did this happen? Yeah, I did once again perish under the killers, however with more knowledge that may be useful in the future. Slowly but surely we will break free from this endless cycle of death. I once again started the next attempt with high hopes by grabbing the ray gun and leaving the radioactive area immediately. Yet again! I turned on the power and went back to the teleporter in order to hopefully not get swarmed by the killers as soon as I got to the pack bunch machine like the last two attempts. Then promptly got the hell out of there faster than I left the group chat when my friends I've known for 5 plus years started to share their controversial and straight up incorrect opinions with me. Incorrect opinions such as, um actually the crossbow is a good weapon, or Elite Kraken is actually an easy boss. You're just bad at the game. Rightfully so, I don't want anything to do with people with those types of opinions. More importantly, however, I had now obtained the Pack-a-Punch ray gun and had all four of my limbs still attached to my body. This is actual progression. Oh my god, it feels great. Never mind, it seems that Slenderman is here to make my life difficult again by blocking my only way out. It appeared as if I had no choice but to defend myself and commit murder. Don't worry guys, it's just like real life. You can get away with crimes if you have a lot of money. Or points, I guess. Anyway, I managed to kill my first killer by burning through two and a half mags. I attempted to leave the area yet again, however I am promptly brought back into a slapping fight unwillingly by Alien, which sends me cowering back into the cafeteria. The rest of the killers then showed up to my front door after they found out online what I did to Slender and I... didn't die? Huh, I'm actually surviving for longer than two seconds against these killers. Ah, there it is. Back to the menu screen I go! I know I've been dying quite a lot here, but don't worry. This endless cycle of death is gonna end pretty soon. I mean, playing round 999 on extreme endless survival mode is like playing a whole different game. Is that game fun, though? No. Just like all of the past attempts, I once again went for the ray gun, went for the power. However, instead, and here's the big twist, I went for the quick revive perk. <gasps> Probably should have gone for this on my first attempt, but whatever, let's just pretend I forgot, okay? After this, I wrapped around the entire area in order to collect the double tap perk, which, get this, kills the killers using one entire mag of Pack-a-Punch ray gun ammo instead of two and a half! Woohoo! Once I acquired this game-changing power, just like the last round, I again teleported away from the killers, Pack-a-Punched the ray gun, grabbed the Bloxy Cola, or energy drink. However, unlike the last round, Slender wasn't there to make my life miserable, and I finally made it back to my safe hidey hole. What a relief. However, of course, we're still far from done here. You know, I can hide from the killers all I want, but it's not really getting any progression done. And of course, to beat this challenge, we have to get to round 1000. Easier said than done when each of the killers have 30 bazillion health. I eventually left my hiding spot and no more than 10 seconds later, I am knocked over by Eyeless Jack and fall into the crowd of angry killers again. <sighs> but don't worry, it's fine, because remember I had the quick revive perk, so I was able to get out of there, turned on the trap so they all died, and hid in my second hidey hole, the Tailstar office room. I'm very grateful that Homer lets us do this sort of thing in Endless Survival, this channel would be impossible without these two strategies. After rounding up all of the killers into one spot, I dashed out of the Tailstar area as fast as I can, reclaimed all of my perks that had been confiscated from me, and just about managed to get back to my first quarantined zone as soon as the killers saw me. That was lucky. And now I can get on to real game progression, not clickbait, unpatched method, working 2023, which involves killing all of the killers through this class where they can't see me and activate their horrible new abilities. You see guys, they are the real ones cowering in fear for their lives, not me. Now I could take them all on any time I wanted, I just want to give them a chance, you know? As you probably would have guessed by now, the ray gun does absolutely no damage to these killers, even with the double tap perk. I can kill them mind you, but it just takes forever. Why on earth did I waste this much time getting the ray gun? What was even the point? This situation is quite literally the equivalent of writing down several pages for an essay, making sure that every word is perfect and fact checked, just to realize that you've read the question wrong and have to do it all over again. And have you been in that situation before? Looks like I'm going to have to use the good old trap method to make any sort of progress, which didn't work this time because it seems like Jack Torrance had other ideas and attempted to put his axe straight into my skull. Thanks, Jack Torrance. Even still though, running around the entire air and turning on both of the electrical traps did net me quite a few kills. Although it was a lot riskier, you know, I'm constantly being chased by the killers and any one of them can end me instantly with their ungodly new abilities. 
And here is where the infinite cycle begins. I'll now take you through how I spent the vast majority of this challenge. We begin in the tail stall area and wait for the killers to pile on top of each other, scrambling and pushing each other aside as if they were lining up to be the first to receive the brand new iPhone, which, according to the advertisements, contains every single metal known to man inside of it, yet still smashes on the way out of the store even if you slightly press on the screen too hard. Once the killer spawn cap is reached, I quickly dash out of the tail stall vent as fast as I can in the other direction of the angry iPhone customers, who are now demanding a refund, screaming at the top of their lungs and chasing me at top speed. Before I put my devious plan into motion, I barricade the only entrance near me to the building so that people looking in won't be able to report me to the police. To stop my already existing customers in their tracks, I then turn on the electrical trap positioned near the mystery box location. I tell the killers that it's actually a charging station, and walking into it will fix their broken iPhone, sending shockwaves throughout their body and killing them instantly. Right before the new customers finally break down all of the barricades to the building, I quickly hide behind the mystery box which is in fact full of Android phones so my scent goes off their radar. They then see the charging station and walk into it with their old iPhone, again killing them instantly because apparently they inserted the plug incorrectly. Not my fault. Once the first electrical trap timer ends and there are now many broken iPhones on the floor, I wait till the kills once again reach the spawn cap and let them know that I have a new charging station nearby that uses 5G and doesn't turn them into a zombie. After that, I go straight back to the tail stall area and the cycle continues. Yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing for pretty much the rest of the playthrough, but I'd like to see you find a better strategy than running around the whole area 50 million times and turning on both of the electrical traps. There isn't a better strategy, I'll tell you that. You know, you can't really use the ray gun, and what's worse is that I don't even know how many kills are left, you know, I'm killing them with traps, not weapons. This whole challenge is a nightmare, I hate it. However, it's also this point in the video where a funny little quirk to this round reared its ugly head. You see, I died to Granny's bear trap. That is, uh, a little unfortunate. Friggin' Granny, really? Uh-huh, you guys all saw that right? I'm not imagining things, am I? Well, I went back to get Quick Revive, but didn't bother getting Double Tap again, because, you know, I'm not even using guns anymore. And after this death, I'd had enough of the game and logged out for the evening. Then the next morning, when I loaded my save... Wait, what? Oh, no. Wait, why do I have Double Tap again? I died. What happened? I I should not have Double Tap. I died. Has this put my progress back? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Yeah, turns out after rewatching the footage and comparing my points to where I logged out and logged back in again, my progress did indeed get reset. I have no idea why this happened, happened a few times throughout this video actually, but my save point would just randomly be put back for no reason. Another funny thing about round 999, or any high round for that matter, is that if you don't kill the killers quickly enough, they'll eventually just disappear. They'll leave. Yep. I'm not joking. You see all these killers? Now you don't. Shoving my keyboard down my throat. Because I have to wait for all of the killers to spawn back. Now I'm having a heart attack. Chucky thought it would be a good idea to attack me when he wasn't even near. <coughs> Get the quick revive perk again, I must. Or maybe I'll end up kicking the dust. Again. Yeah, got you at that last part, didn't I? Don't worry, I won't quit YouTube and become a songwriter. Why do so many YouTubers do that? They quit YouTube and then make horrible music. Maybe that's just a me thing. It feels like it happens all the time. So yeah, I'm just going to be doing this over and over. Yeah, I'm not having much fun with this challenge, you can probably tell. Mostly because the whole time I had no idea how many killers I had left to kill. There's no progress bar in Animal Survival, and even me killing the killers with the traps didn't help because, well, I was using traps, not by hand, so they didn't add to my kill count. Don't worry though, I know how many kills I had to go to get to round 1000. I'll reveal that number at the end of the video. But honestly, that number might not be as big as you're thinking, so cast your votes in the comments now. You might be thinking, oh, Ash, haven't you only been playing this mode for about 20 minutes? Nope, a few minutes for you has been a few hours for me. We're currently on hour two of this challenge, believe it or not. I think something that really helped my sanity was knowing that there was indeed a finite number of killers I had to kill. Every single killer that walked into one of those traps was one less killer I had to worry about. But Man, was that process slow. I got so bored that I calculated that at maximum efficiency during one session, I could kill about 40 to 60 killers using both of the traps combined. But honestly, this is just most of the footage. Just me waiting around. This, 
This is probably the worst part, leaving the tail stall area. Not only do all of the killers make such an awful sound, but you have to stick to the right when exiting, so all of the killers don't see you in time and activate their abilities, so you get swarmed or something. I had quite a few near misses at this stage. I swear, if it wasn't for me actually learning all of the killer abilities beforehand, I definitely would have died a few rounds ago. Well, I mean, I'm still on the same round. What is time in this endless void? Is time even real anymore? Don't worry, I figured something like this would happen, so to pass the time I'm going to do something that I haven't done in about two years, and that is answer your guys' questions, in like a Q&A style. O okay then, you, you think of something to pass the time then, hmm? I guess we'll start with some frequently asked questions, then we'll move on to specific questions that my community themselves have asked me, and the most frequently asked question that I've ever had on my channel is, drum roll please. <gasps> Do you own a watermelon cooler? Okay, just kidding, nobody's ever asked that. What is my gender? This is a question I get asked all of the time. I get it in my comments, when I'm in game, like literally when I'm playing Sanctic Juggernaut or Killer Mode, there'd be people in chat arguing about what gender I am. Man, Ashcat is so cool. Did you see her new video? Um, actually, I think it's a boy. Uh, no, have you seen their Roblox avatar? It's actually a girl. And then they'll start having an argument until I inevitably leave the game. Not because of them though, I probably just got bored or something. But anyway, am I a boy or a girl? Well, I'm very stubborn, so neither. I'm something you may call non-binary. And if you don't know what that word means, then um, you're, you're too young. You really should get off the internet. Tell your parents to limit your screen time. Trust me, it's for the best. Essentially, I prefer being referred to with they them pronouns. Are they them causing mayhem? <laughs> I'm not funny. But yeah, sorry if you didn't know that. That's probably a large majority of you, so uh, Whoops. The reason why I haven't discussed it before on the channel is because one, I don't really like talking about topics such as gender on the channel because, you know, it's kind of a complicated can of worms that I don't really want to get too deep into, and two, I've never really found a good time to talk about my gender in one of my videos. Like, my gender doesn't really matter that much. At least to me it doesn't. But yeah, if you could refer to me as a they them, that that'll be that'll be very cool. I know that might be difficult and some of you may not understand. Like I'm not gonna chase you to the ends of the earth if you call me a he or a she. Yes, I am a they them. I am indeed multiple people. But yeah, hopefully you guys will accept me. We'll be able to see that statistic through the likes and dislikes. Oh wait, never mind, YouTube hit the dislikes. My bad, you guys have to accept me now. <laughs> See what I did there? Like I hinted at earlier, I think the main confusion with my gender is just with my Roblox avatar. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, yeah, my Roblox avatar is indeed a woman. You know, a girl, a damsel, a female. I'm pretty sure you guys all know what a female is. Unless you're playing League of Legends or something, I don't know. And that brings us on to our second question. Wow, that first question went on for way too long. Uh, why does your Roblox avatar look so different from you? Well, my Roblox avatar is actually my OC. You know, original character, called Alice. Yeah, now her name is official. What, well, I'm not gonna call her Ash Ash Cat's ghost, am I? Alice is a separate entity from who I am. We aren't the same person even though she's not real, sorry guys. Does that make sense? You know, I just like having a persona to represent myself with online. I don't really like making my avatars within games look like me. Because come on, look at me, I'm hideous. I mean, this is what my Roblox avatar would look like if I based it on my real life self. Wait, hold on, gotta make it accurate. Okay, now it's accurate. So yeah, that's Alice, all right? I don't know if I'm gonna use her for anything outside of being my avatar for YouTube and Roblox, but we'll see. Never say never. Okay, next question. Why don't you upload as much anymore? I mean, the answer to this question is gonna be pretty obvious if you've been following me for a while, but uh, yeah, I used to upload like three times a week or something like that. Nowadays, it's impossible for me to upload like once every three weeks, so what exactly happened? Well, mostly because my videos are taking longer and longer to produce each time I make one. Like, I have to script the video, which takes ages, record all of the gameplay, which takes ages, record my voiceover, me talking to the camera, which takes ages, edit the video, which takes ages, and commission a thumbnail, which can take ages, it depends. So yeah, there's certainly a lot of work that goes into each of my videos nowadays. They're not super easy to make anymore, but you know what? I think it's worth all of the time and effort. And also, I don't spend all of my time every day making videos. I feel like I have a good balance of life and YouTube, you know. And I'm not always thinking about YouTube. It's not even my job, just a passion. 
I don't even have a job. That's also kind of why I've been making a lot of shorts recently. That take, what, only a few hours to create with very minimal planning? I can get one fully edited within a single afternoon. And it allows me to continually produce content when large scale videos like these aren't coming out as often. Woo, okay, that's all the frequently asked questions I have time for today. Time to move on to some more, perhaps, specific questions given to me by my community. Specifically by my beloved Discord server. Yeah, bet you didn't know that. I do indeed have a Discord server. I've never mentioned that on the channel before. You can join it if you want. It's shockingly active for some reason. Also, sometimes I post unhinged selfies of myself there. So yeah, if you want to send me fan art, which I love consuming, by the way, give me all of the fan art, then maybe consider joining. 13 plus only, by the way, or I will remove your kneecaps using a frying pan. First question is by William Afton himself also known as Springtrap. When did you become a FNAF fan? Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I'm a bit of a Five Nights at Freddy's fan. You know, just, 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 just a small one. You know, I, I know a few things about the series. I know too much about the series. I think around 2015 is when I learned of the game series' existence. It was right before the release of the third game. And yeah, before you ask, I did go and watch the film when it came out twice. It's a 10 of 10 masterpiece, not biased at all. I loved every second of it. It was so good. Lewis asks, what's the best thing you've ever achieved? Bro, I'm a Roblox YouTuber. You only become a Roblox YouTuber if you haven't achieved anything in life. Okay, no, just kidding. I'm proud of my grades, I guess. We call them GCSEs here in the land of T. They're not like anything close to the top marks, but I passed and that's all I really needed. I'm also super proud of getting all badges within 24 hours on Sanctuk. That video was super fun to make, and I still can't believe I did it to be honest. Spoiler alert, but did you know that me getting Silent Killer wasn't actually gonna happen? Yeah, that whole sequence, literally I was gonna invite 12 of my friends to join my game and reset for me to cheese the badge. We all had it planned out and everything, then I just logged on with Coco to record some more Juggernaut games and just happened to get around where I was lucky enough to get Silent Killer. The rest is history. Vibed asks, why did you sleep with Captain Zombie in one of your videos? I'm assuming he's referring to the Captain Zombie pillar within my 24 hour badge video. Is it because your son is fish face? Ah uh, yeah, Captain Zombie. Now I want to make it abruptly clear that I do not have an attraction towards Lego characters, okay? You're just gonna have to believe me on that one, I promise you, that I don't think Captain Zombie is hot in the slightest. And, you know, so some people might have an attraction towards Lego characters. And I think it's important to respect- actually, no, if you even remotely find something like this attractive, then you need to get off the internet right now. This is disgusting. I hate everything about this. Friggin- And now it's dead. Coco asks, what video took the longest to make? Definitely the Sanctic Iceberg videos. Combined, I want to say they took about two to three hundred hours to edit, record, script, all of that combined. Yeah, I haven't left my house since 2018. Wonder what grass tastes like, honestly. Artist Guy asks, what do you think about dolls? I mean, I own Skylanders. I mean, these are kind of dolls, I, I guess. They're like toys to life. You like place them on a portal and they like come to life in the game. It was a pretty cool gimmick back in 2014. You know, I don't own any anime characters. I'm like most 17 year olds apparently. No, these, these are infinitely cool. It's definitely not the reason why women and men for that matter never come over to my house. Not at all. Somebody asks, can I have a shout out? No, I'm going to blur out your name and profile picture so that you don't get a shout out and nobody will ever know who you are. I'm the master of trolling. Barney, I think, asks, biggest fear? <laughs> the only thing I fear is fear itself. And bugs. And the dark. And failure. And death. And the end of the world. And aliens. And RT asks, what on earth is the black goo on Alice's face? In reality, it's just the evil side UGC accessory. Bro, you think I made this OC with any thought put into her? No, I didn't. The only facts I have about Alice's quote-unquote character that I can give right now is that one, she's 19, and two, she stands at a jaw-dropping 7 feet and 2 inches tall, at least canonically. Oh yes, very important fact, although I can't actually make her 7 foot in my thumbnails because, you know, she'd just be too tall compared to all of the other characters. I'm sure one day I'll add some lore to Alice, but for now, she just kind of exists. Actually, just had a thought. You know what we need? You know all of the Russell and Sal clones that you see every once in a while in Sanctic? We need to start an Alice cult. Genuinely, I'm curious to see how accurate you guys can recreate her in Roblox. 
Like, whenever I join Sactic nowadays, I always see people saying, Guys, it's not the real Ash, they're fake. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a fake Ash cat before in game. Like, ever. I mean, what, her outfit only costs like 443 Robux? So yeah, it's not a super expensive avatar to replicate. I'm honestly surprised that many people haven't yet. Someone I will not say the name of because they got banned for posting the entire Five Nights at Freddy's movie on my server asks, do you enjoy being on YouTube? Dude, just saying, but I would not be here making this video right now if I didn't enjoy being on YouTube. You know, I don't do all of this stuff for money. Yeah, I do make money off of my videos, but it's not, you know, enough for me to consider this thing a job or anything like that. And I, I've never really considered YouTube a job, you know, even if I make enough money off of it to live off, then I probably still wouldn't consider it a job, you know, I, I, I'm here because I want to be here. I like talking about Roblox, and I like talking about Sactic, they are my passions, and I'm quite proud of the community that I've created, or at least 90% of it, I'd say this, if you're watching this video, there's a decent chance that you're pretty cool. Area51 a few badges asks, what about Sactic makes you keep playing it? How do you play Juggernaut and Killer Mode all day without getting bored or frustrated? Now, Sactic is a far from perfect game. I think that Killer and Juggernaut modes, unless you aren't speedrunning or anything, are the only replayable game modes. And to be honest, I understand if you don't find them enjoyable. You have to find a balance in my opinion. For example, I think that Juggernaut mode in particular is painfully frustrating if you're in a serve with more than two players with over 200,000 points or something. Or they have game passes. Or even just servers with more than 15 players. Like, it's just not fun for either party, both the players and the juggernaut. It's not fun for the players because they will basically get no guns because they'll all be taken. And it's not fun for the juggernaut because they'll get absolutely destroyed. So that's why I stick to smaller servers on juggernaut mode, filled with noobs. You see this? This is a server that true men play on. You know, I don't want to join a large server with loads of Game Pass users. Nah, I'm just too good for them. I'd win every game with my eyes closed. I have to use my skill on these noobs, clearly. And killer mode, I get it. A lot of people don't like killer mode. And yeah, I agree, it's really not for everyone. You need a great deal of patience and anger management to not get stressed or upset while playing as a killer because it can be very frustrating. You have to just accept the fact that you're going to die over and over again trying to kill that Pack-a-Punch Raygun spammer. But when you finally do kill them, oh my god, it is the best feeding in the world. It's better than finding love for the first time. Not that I would know how that feels, but it's probably true. I don't even play as a survivor on killer mode anymore. Like, I just leave the game immediately. Mostly because being a survivor is so boring when you're not messing around with friends. You might as well just play hard classic mode. Shadow Knight asks, how do you see yourself on YouTube in five years? I mean, I don't see myself getting like a million subs or anything like that. Like, ever, to be honest, not even like in the next five years. And to be honest, that's not really what I want. YouTube is just my passion at the moment. I just reached 20,000 subs, and if I stay at 20,000 subs for the rest of the channel's life, I'll be okay with that. Honestly, being a popular YouTuber is kinda scary. I don't know, everyone's got eyes on you, everyone expects something from you, or at least that's how I see it. Plus, people start bringing up things that you said like five years ago to try and cancel you online because it makes them feel special and brings them attention. I mean, sometimes I guess it's justified if they've done something illegal, like having a sleeping donkey in your bathtub after 7pm, which is apparently a crime in Oklahoma. Hey, learn something new every day. I don't know if you guys know this, but when I was 13, I accidentally misgendered a rock. I, I know, I know, I hope in time you guys will forgive me for this. What was I thinking, honestly? I gotta make like a 20 minute YouTube apology now. Oh, my career's just over. Nah, I'm just kidding. I've never done anything in my life that will get me canceled. I, I think. Anyway, don't get me wrong, I'd be very grateful if a video of mine blew up or something, but I don't know, I don't need to be the biggest Roblox YouTuber ever or something. I don't need to be a big YouTuber in general, I'll, I'll be happy just staying at this sub count, I'll be fine. Heck, I don't even need to do anything remarkable in my life. I'm not obligated to. Nobody is in my opinion. I mean, all power to you if you change the world or something. Cool, awesome, nice, but like, you know, I'm just a silly Roblox YouTuber. 17 year old Roblox YouTuber covering a game about killing killers in Area 51 with fictional weapons from Call of Duty. I'm not really doing anything remarkable at the moment. 
Test account asks, are you Sigma? Yeah, my bra, I have that skibbity toilet Ohio Riz drip hitting the gritty one to buckle my shoe Giat Amoga sussy imposter Sigma. I'm gonna stop right there before I make your ears bleed. Apologies for that, won't happen again. Vibed asks, wait, have I already answered a question from you? Eh, whatever. Vibed asks, are all the thumbnails drawn by you or sometimes someone else? Now, I used to draw all of my thumbnails, like before I made the Sanctic Iceberg series. That's why the art style looks so different between the two. You see, I can only draw using pixel art, which, yeah, it's unique and whatever, but if you've ever drawn pixel art before, you know that it just takes freaking forever. If I had a freedom dollar for every hour I spent working on drawing a thumbnail using pixel art, I could probably buy every single country in the world. Like, per thumbnail, on average, it took about eight hours. And honestly, I was never really 100% happy with how the final result turned out, especially with how I used to draw Alice. Like, her hair looked like a stretched banana for god's sakes. Plus, I'm like really bad with drawing proportions, like in one thumbnail Alice's arm would be super thin or something, and then bang, in the next thumbnail her arm is super fat. However, nowadays I don't make the thumbnails anymore, or at least not the art. No, I pay my lovely thumbnail artist Ryu, formerly known as Carl. Wait, they changed their name again. Their name is Ro now. Okay, uh, whatever. Honestly, all of the art that he makes is absolutely amazing, and if it wasn't for him being here for me, I would probably be dead. Not, not in real life though. It just saves me a ton of time and I don't have to worry about making the thumbnails much. It's just super helpful. Now I am still trying to learn digital art as we speak, keyword trying, but to be honest, no matter how many YouTube tutorials I watch, I don't think I'm ever gonna get better. I'm just so used to drawing with a mouse. And I know it's kind of a jump scare for artists right there. Yeah, I used to draw with a mouse and so I draw my pixel art. And I just can't use a drawing tablet for the life of me. I don't know how you guys do it. It's super difficult. Better Pay Milk asks, who wins a fight? Alice or you? Bro, I have this idea that Alice, the character at least, is actually like super strong. Not like Superman levels of strong or anything, like she could lift a car with both arms type of strong. I don't want to make her invincible or anything, that would just be boring. Invincible OCs are, are boring, okay? I don't care who you are. If she's able to do stuff like that, then I bet you can tell who's winning the battle. I wouldn't survive two seconds. Plus she's older than me and is like seven foot. So really there's no competition anyway, even without her strength. Like the only person I think I could win a fight against would be like a six-year-old boy or like a 90-year-old grandpa in a hospital bed. I mean, it's pretty easy to win that battle, just unplug their life support. Listen, I don't have much muscle on me, and plus I'm a pacifist. Violence isn't the answer. Not Scott asks, how many survive and kill the killers killers could a killer survive and kill if a killer from survive and kill the killers could survive and kill the killers in Area 51? The answer is 42. RT asks, again, a lot of repeat people here, sorry for all the people I didn't answer their questions from, but whatever, I'm just picking and choosing here. Best anime. Well, I've only watched three animes in my entire life, I know I'm not the biggest weeb ever. Pokemon, which I haven't watched since 2018. Yu-Gi-Oh, which I watched for the nostalgia, and Attack on Titan, which I've almost finished. And honestly, out of all of them, <laughs> Attack on Titan's a clear winner. It's just got, it's just, it's just really good. Please go watch it. I'm gonna go barricade all my doors and windows now. The One Piece fans are on their way. Lewis asks, weirdest thing you've owned? Well, I don't really own many weird things, unlike most teenagers apparently, unless you consider all of this stuff as weird, like Final Fantasy Freddy stuff, Mario stuff, Final Fantasy Freddy stuff, M Mario stuff, Final Fantasy Freddy stuff, Skylander stuff, M Mario stuff. Yeah, I'm just kind of stuck in my own little bubble, huh? Anyway, that's all of the questions that I have time for. I tried answering the most interesting ones, I actually got loads of questions. But if there's something that you would like to know about me that I didn't explain here, besides whether or not I own a watermelon cool, I'm never answering that question. Again, just head over to my Discord server and ask me that. Remember, 13 plus only, or you will get a frying pan straight to the kneecaps. Anyway, yeah, in terms of round 999, you haven't missed much progress actually, besides me turning a thousand or so more killers into rotisserie chicken. When does the torment end? Oh, but that's not even the worst part. You see, when I went to go take a quick bathroom break because I don't trust myself going AFK and losing all of my progress while I go tinkle, guess what happened when I came back? Alright, oh, let's see if my progress saved. Please save. I was on 3.50. 30 minutes of work! Gone! Yes! Thanks, game. Thanks, game. Awesome. Didn't save. Great. As you can tell, I was not angry at all after this discovery. Swear to god, this stupid endless survival glitch where it doesn't save the round has wasted like... 
God knows how much time. So after going through all of that hell again, after five long hours of my life, which I will certainly never get back, filled with many struggles, ray gun spamming, heart attacks, killing thousands of killers, something finally interesting happened. The killer stopped. Why did they stop? Is this the end? Is this the end? Oh my god! Is this the end? Is this it? <gasps> I think this is it! This is it! This is the end! We're finally free! We're finally free! This is it! No way! Finally! Okay, okay. The game could be glitched. Okay. Hello, Sonic. Hi. This is actually it. Yes! 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 Yeah! Yeah! We did it! Finally! Round 1000! Yes! If you want to see me go to round 1001, then make sure you let me know in the comment. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's it. I'm done. If I've learned absolutely anything from this whole experience, it's to never, ever, ever do extreme endless survival ever again. This challenge was actually hell and not fun to do at all. Please don't try it in your free time. As for the total number of killers I killed during the round, well, I'll reveal it now. 3,997 killers killed. Yep, no, I didn't go ahead and count them all one by one by looking at the footage. Just use this formula that the game uses to determine how many killers spawn each round. But anyway, yeah, that's the end of that. Another pointless tactic challenge knocked off my bucket list. Wait, wait, hold on, don't end the video there. We've got one final question to read off. This one in the form of a letter. Which one of you guys knows where I live? Anyway, the question is from Jade. I don't know anyone called Jade. Can I draw Alice as a watermelon cooler? Very fun.